Yugi Bros! What's up my Yugi Bros? It's Connor. A little disclaimer before we start this video. This week's weekly giveaway items are three packs of Scars of Battle. All you have to do to enter said giveaway is both like this video and all other videos with the weekly giveaway item on the sidebar of said video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already of course, and last but not least, answer the daily question provided that is randomly placed in each video promoting said giveaway. But with that out of the way, now back to your regularly scheduled content. What's up Yugi Bros, we got another dual video for you guys today. Today we are bringing you Burn vs Gaia. I know you guys know all about Gaia. It's actually doing a really good job in Speed World, but let's see what we can do with it. Now, I haven't seen too many builds, so I might be playing a few, uh, uh, a few tech choices. Uh, but they're starting off with Twisted Personality. For the people that don't know, each time a player loses life points, place one counter on this card, max three. Once returned during your main phase, you can use one of the following skills. You can remove two counters. Uh, then discard one random card from your opponent's hand, or you can remove three counters from this card to destroy one face-up card your opponent controls. So it really gives Burn this extra layer of not only protection by slowly getting whittling away at um, either players' hands or players' fields, but it gives them a level of playability where if if they get rid of something on the field, for example, and like they have something like this, like they can have Curse Swing directly, and then that could just be extra damage that they didn't previously know they could do. Uh, we are playing, obviously, Knight of Legend. Uh, this is activate this skill during your main phase. Each turn, one guy, the Fierce Knight, you normal summon can be summoned without tributing. Apply the following skills while well, you control Gaia the Fierce Knight monster or a Gaia the Dragon Champion monster. If it attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage, battle damage to your opponent. Uh, once per turn, if it inflicts battle damage with the skill, draw two cards, then discard one card. Uh, the downside, however, is you cannot activate set cards in the spell and trap zone. So, essentially, while this is out, more or less, you're kind of denkoing yourself. Uh, so, we're playing cards that, you know, we're just not going to set, basically. Uh, so, they start out with Curse, which is going to do 500 to us and put a counter on this Twisted Personality. Which seems really strong. They open Nightmare Wheel, Zoma the Spirit, which are also very strong. They're going to set both, and they got the Blast Sphere in hand. We have Charging Guy the Fierce Knight, Summoner's Art, Gentlemander, and Guy the Fierce Knight. We're playing Gentlemander to redirect attacks to keep our Gaias on the field, but also if we can lock them out with two of those, it's always fun as well. Um, I elected not to play the Sphere Karibos in the deck. I don't know, I just found there really isn't any space for them. And getting extras of these out is not the end of the world. It's not like Serpent Knight Dragon where you feel like you need so much protection to protect the card or else if it dies, good luck summoning it again. Because this allows you to summon Gaia uh, without tributing, it's a lot easier to do so, but this also is a Gaia the Fierce Knight that you can normal summon without tributing by itself. So you don't even need the skill for it. Where Serpent Knight Dragon, you had to play Tribute Doll and you know double cost in and stuff to give you like extra ways to get them out quicker no you've got it all between this and this so we actually summon gentlemander and attack because we know they're not going to attack us that much so gentlemander's not going to do all that much on the board but also if they attack this we can drop another one and prevent them from ever attacking again which i guess against burn isn't a big deal but it's just something to keep in mind so we get a second counter because they get a second counter because we do damage to them and their end phase they're going to zone with the spirit because zoma summons out in defense mode so this allows them to put in attack mode go figure in this game they're actually going to attack us so they actually remove both counters to hit the card in our hand uh and the targeting thing wasn't working so uh he used the one to four system or whatever i'm not sure and he hit second farthest so Guy is gone for us. Now they're gonna set Blast Sphere. And they're gonna set these Zoma that they drew. And to keep in mind that Zoma still occupies the trap zone, still counts as a trap. Uh, we're gonna put the token there for that. We're gonna go to the battle phase and we're gonna drop our Gentlemander so they now can't attack us. We draw offerings to the doom. This is actually really good against Zoma the Spirit because it allows us to get rid of it off the field without dealing with its burn damage effect that happens if it dies by battle. So we're going to switch both our manders to attack mode. We're going to add Gaia the Fierce Knight. 
We're gonna flip our skill. And we're gonna normal summon Guy the Fierce Knight the old fashioned way. We're gonna have Gentlemander swing into this defense monster. And I guess they didn't realize that they locked themselves out here. Um, but they did. So Blasphere actually just. So Blasphere actually just. Um, yeah, it wasn't supposed to go to grave. It just flips and we take 200 damage. Which does put a counter on it. Well, if Gaia try to swing in there, but they're going to Nightmare Wheel. So that's kind of a bummer for us. And then we're going to have to pass. And keep in mind, we can't set this because of the skill. Also, it was a battle phase anyway. But they draw a Sphere Karibo. So Wheel's going to burn us for five. They're going to get another counter. And they're actually just going to pass. We draw a Night Beam. Really good against this deck. Knocks out that Zoma. So we don't have to deal with it. We're going to Tribute... <laughs> Gentlemander and the Gaia that was equipped with Nightmare Wheel for charging Gaia. So that we can attack. <laughs> so we're going to get off the Blast Sphere, but we're not because Sphere Karibo exists. So then we're going to offer to the Doom Zoma so that they don't end up doing some shenanigans where they crash it or something. I know that our monster's in defense mode, but we better just get rid of it all altogether. Rather Gentlemander take less damage. They're going to have Blast Sphere swing into Gentlemander. They drew another Nightmare Wheel. They're going to set that. This thing's up to three counters, too, keep in mind. So they can actually destroy a face-up card on our field on the following turn. We don't draw. So we'll just go right into Battle Phase after switching Charging Gaia to Attack Mode and try to attack Blast Sphere, but only to get Nightmare Wheeled. Arguably, they didn't have to waste the wheel because this is going to probably pop this, but... I get the reason. Keep it another 1400 beat stick. You don't know if you actually have any other way to do damage. And then they have the skill do so. So it'll get rid of the Gaia. Then they'll normal summon the second Blast Sphere and actually have enough for game. So unfortunately, we lose game one. But. It does showcase. I, I understand Burn's probably not the best uh, way to reveal how powerful Gaia can be but I do like to point out that you will be playing a lot of burn in the meta so if you want to play this competitively this is something you'll probably see a lot so we start out with command knight which has a big ass <laughs> so we're gonna set that boy and then we set offerings to the doomed as well and we have both our Gaia's for the future they open Zoma, Blast Sphere, Sphere Karibo, and Gravekeeper's Curse they Draw into Lady Assailant of Flames. Now this is quite an interesting card. I don't exactly agree with it in this build where you're already using your normal summon to set this or summon this. Uh, but it can go for a lot of extra damage that, you know, you don't exactly expect. You banish three cards. This actually hasn't been updated. You banish three cards from the top of your deck to inflict 800 damage to your opponent's life points. Um, it can be a clutch card in something like this burn deck. So they're going to set the Blast Sphere though right now and set the uh, Zoom of the Spirit and pass. We're going to draw a Twister which we sided in because of this card and Nightmare Wheel. We're going to flip Offerings of the Doom to destroy the Zoma. We're going to activate our skill and Normal Summon Guy the Fierce Knight. Now the reason we did that beforehand is because we can't fl activate our set cards uh, while this is up. So we did this first, get rid of the card, then used it. Now we're done. Now we're forced to not set stuff. We're gonna flip Command Knight face up, which puts Gaia at 2700, which is kind of ridiculous. And we're gonna have Gaia swing in. Unfortunately, it's Blast Sphere, but we'll have Command Knight swing in for 1600, and they get a counter on that. So they set the lady. Because they kind of don't have a lot of defense here between Sphere Karibo. If you set, if you summoned Curse, then to be forced to stay in attack mode. We don't draw because of Offerings to Zoomed. However, we will twist her in the draw phase to destroy the Blast Sphere and take a lot less damage and not lose our Gaia. Sounds good, right? We're going to normal summon Charging Gaia, which, who, which would come out at 1900 attack points. Now what we should have done here was attack with one of the guys to do piercing and get the effect to draw to and discard one, but also get them lower in life points. But we didn't, so that's my misplay. They're going to use its effect to burn us for 800 damage, but to no avail, it's not really going to stop us. However, that Sphere Karibo will stop us, but they have to take that guy to the face. 
So they're down to 500. And they need to survive. And they're going to use their skill to destroy our guy, the Fierce Knight, in defense mode. I'm going to set a Blast Sphere and pass. At this point, it's all but over. We're going to have Command Knight swing in, take the Blast Sphere. That's fine. We'll have game three now. So they open Double Blast Sphere, Curse, Sphere Karibo. We open Spell Shining Arrow, Summoner's Art, Night Beam, and Gaia. We're playing Spell Shining Arrow because of Mask of the Accursed and Blast Sphere. Now we haven't seen Mask of the Accursed up to this point. Uh, a lot of Burn players play it. However, Nightmare Wheel makes it so that you don't have to play it as much anymore. But we do know that they've been playing Blast Sphere this entire match, so we definitely have it for that. Um, I'd love to say that... Gaia has a good matchup against this because of the last game. However, the last game they didn't open a whole lot of back row. And this game, as you can see, they don't really either. So it's a little tough to tell. But they're going to normal summon the curse. They're going to get a counter on Twisted Personality, putting us to 35, and they're going to pass. We are going to Summoner's Art for Gaia. And they don't know we have the second one. We'll We'll just keep it that way. We're going to flip our scale, normal summon Gaia, and we're going to have it swing into Curse, and they're going to Sphere Karibo. So they're going to draw a Zone of the Spirit. They're going to switch Curse to Defense Mode, they're going to set Blast Sphere, and they're going to set Zoma and Pass. In the draw phase, we open Offerings to the Doomed, and they flip Zoma of the Spirit, probably to dodge the Night Beam as they did previous in the last game. Putting it in Defense Mode. Setting it up with the token there. But we drew, did draw Offerings to the Doomed, which arguably just outs that right off the bat. So it's a little unfortunate for them, but it is a very real card in speed nonetheless. We're going to Normal Summon another Gaia. We're going to swing into Curse, and they're going to take 1500 damage. The reason they do that is because Knight of Legend will give that Gaia the piercing, and then give us the ability to draw two and discard a card. What's crazy about that is that we draw another Offerings to the Doomed. We already have a Charging Gaia, so we figure either Gaia or Night Beam, but let's just get rid of the Gaia in case they draw another card that we need the Night Beam for. And this one is a Blast Sphere. But worry not, we have our Spell Shattering Arrow. Now we're going to Offerings to the Doomed before we end our turn on the Zoma, because if we didn't, they have a very good chance to switch that Zoma to attack mode, attack it, have it kill itself, and then do... 2300 to our life points. We'd rather avoid that. And we can't set offerings to Zoomed because of Knight of Legend. We can't activate our set cards. So, figured we'd just do it there, get rid of it altogether. They're going to draw a Sphere Karibo. They're going to use Twisted Personality's skill to randomly hit a card out of our hand. They're going to hit the Night Beam. Works out for us because that was dead as of right now. I'm going to set Blast Sphere and pass. We're going to Spell Shedding Arrow in our draw phase, we can't draw because of Offerings, to get rid of the Blast Sphere and do 500 to them. Putting a counter back on Twisted Personality. We're going to Normal Charging Gaia, and we're going to go into Battle Phase. We're going to have Regular Gaia number 1 swing into Blast Sphere. And regular Gaia number 2 swing into directly to try to end it, and they're going to Sphere. And look at this, they actually survive with 100 life points off our Charging Gaia, who's currently at 1900. So... They draw, and they hit Lava Golem. <laughs> and this Lava Golem is going to get summoned on the two monsters that aren't on the Blast Sphere. And then they're going to use Twisted Personality. Originally, the thought process is, oh, it's fine, we'll just offerings the Lava if we need to, or offerings the Gaia so that we don't take the 23 to the face. Uh, but then they use Twisted Personality's effect to discard the only remaining card in our hand, Leaving us to then go into the standby phase, lose our Gaia the Fierce Knight to Blast Sphere for 2300, and then take an additional 1000 off Lava Golem, putting us at 200. And can you believe it? If Burn just had one way to stall this Gaia that didn't involve Dice Foon potentially destroying it, that we also cited as a YOLO precaution, we definitely would have lost this game. <laughs> but we hang on. But boy, was that close. Extremely close. Uh, so first off, with the Gaia 
deck, we play three Guy of the Fierce Knight, three Charging Guy of the Fierce Knight, two Command Knight, I feel like three Clogs in a bit, and three Gentlemander for the monsters. Like I said, again, we elected not to play Sphere Kribo. It just kind of seems like we don't need it. I could be wrong. There might be reasons for it, but I do like this extra boost in Command Knight. And Gentlemander, I feel like, is enough usually to protect our boy. Then we play three more Guy of the Fierce Knight in the form of Summoner's Art. Three offerings to the Doomed because we can't really set our cards or activate our set cards. So we need the quick plays that do stuff uh, during the battle phase. And then Triple Knight Beam. This might be overkill, but I do really like it against most matchups. Allowing us to just freely get into that piercing mode that we want to do so much with this deck. Um... Then we side Santa Claus, like I side in literally everything, because just in case you need it as an out. We side DD Crow because the sixth slot, we didn't really know what to use for it, but we figured we'll use DD Crow because it's the most generic. Uh, and then we play four quick plays that we can also alternatively use during the battle phase. The first is Order to Charge, which is you tribute a normal monster to uh, destroy one monster your opponent controls. Sure, we probably don't ever need that, but in case we needed extra protection, we have that. Then we play one Spell Shattering Arrow to get rid of face-up spell cards. The one Twister, as I said, to get rid of another face-up spell or trap on the field. And then we play one Dice Foon, because even though you do have the ris run the risk of rolling a 1 or a 6, the 2, 3, 4, or 5 options are really solid, and sometimes can get you what you need to do when you need to do it. Having a uh, Quick Play MST or Twin Twisters sometimes is really, really strong, especially in Speed Duels. Uh, alternatively, Burn, we played the one Lava Golem, triple Curse, triple Blast Sphere, triple Sphere Karibo, one Supply Squad, triple Mask of the Accursed, triple Nightmare Wheel, and triple Zoma. I know it's triples for everything. Uh, we never saw the Supply Squad, so I really can't show you guys how that does. We also never saw the Masks, which is insane. Um... Curse, I think, is just standard for the Burn. Blast Sphere is standard for the Burn. Sphere is going to defend you. Uh... And you're already maximizing your areas into continuous cards. Uh, you might as well have a little extra oomph that's not something you have to set to your spell and trap zone. Supply Squad, I actually do like this in here a lot. For something like this, where it just kind of sits dead afterward, uh, you get a little extra draw through it. But it also is a really easy card to side out. It's almost like an upstart goblin. It's a super easy side out going into game two and three. We side a second Lava Golem, a Lady Assailant of the Flames, a Spell Shattering Arrow, a Metal Reflex Slime in case all else defenses fail, uh, 3000 Wall sometimes ends up being clutch. We side a Coffin Cellar, this is a new continuous trap in the game, this is each time a monster or monsters is sent to your opponent's grave, you inflict 300 damage to your opponent. There's nothing that's really doing that at a substantial rate that this deck would ever go up against, but we have it just in case. And then of course the one waking the dragon, uh, if they're obviously destroying our back row a lot, Night Beams included, we have this colorful collection of monsters that we can summon uh, for that reason. But guys, what did you think? Did you like, love, or hate any of my card choices? Anything we played in this match? Please leave your comments down below. Uh, on the Facebook page, I've actually been having votes. Uh, I had a vote up for whether people wanted to see this video first or... Uh, the video I will have later on in the week. If you want to know what that is, check out my Facebook page. Um, I will be doing video. I'll probably be doing uh, votes for videos. I'll, I'll choose two that I want to put up, and I'll have you guys choose whether or not which one you want up first. And, uh, you know, we'll see where we can go with that. I'm pretty new to having a Facebook page in addition to other pages besides my channel, so bear with me while I slowly get everything together. Uh, but I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I think Facebook, for example, is a really cool way to get people to start voting on things. That way I can choose, you know, uh, specific videos, but also just what you guys want to see more of in general. Uh, but anyways... The winner of last week's giveaway video is CB Music. So CB Music, if you could, uh, click the Facebook link in the description below. Uh, and that will let you uh, private message me directly, your address, and I will mail you your um, Match of the Millennium starter deck. 
But of course, with that out of the way, uh, like, subscribe as always, hit that notification bell to get all of our latest updates, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yugi Bros out.